Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armoury, where all weapons from Halo lore will be featured and analysed in detail. Last time we looked at the shock rifle, but today we're returning to the UNSC arsenal and looking at a weapon I've seen requested tons of times in the comments of previous Armoury videos. If you want me to cover something specifically in the Armoury, leave a comment down below. The most frequently requested weapon will of course be the subject of the next Armoury. But for now, in this episode, we look at the Railgun. Let's begin. The Railgun, also known as the Asymmetric Recoilless Carbine 920, or the ARC 920, is a compact channel linear accelerator weapon used by the United Nations Space Command, first seen in active combat in 2557 with the Spartan IV attachment of the UNSC Infinity during the Requiem campaign. Designed by Asheron Security, the weapon can be attained by Spartan personnel for a cost of 63,405 credits and operates best in close to medium ranges. The railgun features a widened grip profile so it can be wielded by both standard UNSC personnel and larger Spartan super soldiers, although it is worth noting it's overwhelmingly used by the Spartans just due to how large and powerful the weapon is. As to be expected by most UNSC weapons of the 26th century, the railgun provides the usual array of features such as weapons electronic suites. The weapon loads from the top, rear of the trigger group. The foregrip is a smooth housing case for the weapon's pair of parallel conducting rails used to accelerate the projectile. Its default coloration is matte black with tan painted composite housing panels. Although some variations of this colour palette have been seen, both as unique to the user or to denote special variants. The weapon is still only in limited production and can technically still be considered as a prototype weapon. It is fairly heavy as a weapon, however its disposable power cells and ferric shelled M645 FTPHE projectiles has dramatically decreased the weapon's total mass. In spite of this lighter weight over previous models, it is still prohibitively heavy and cumbersome for general use by non-augmented personnel. The railgun measures 43.6 inches or 111 centimeters in length, 2.9 inches or 7.4 centimeters in width, 12.5 inches or 32 centimeters in height, and weighs 14.9 kilograms or around 33 pounds. And the railgun fires the M645 ferric tungsten projectile high explosive, which is a 16 millimeter by 65 millimeter slug. The projectile itself is housed within a rectangular casing that also contains a disposable power cell for the stored electrical charge necessary to offload into the weapon's capacitors for the single firing of the housed projectile. It is loaded through a topside magazine well that also forcibly ejects the rectangular casing once the round is fired, leaving it clear for the next to be loaded, meaning each rectangular casing is a single shot. Overall, it is the result of scientific breakthroughs following the Human Covenant War that allowed for portable handheld electromagnetic launcher systems to actually be used viably in combat versus extremely large and cumbersome equivalents such as the Gorse Cannon used on the back of the Warthog, or indeed the heavier platform seen used on the Cobra, and again rail cannon type turrets used on UNSC starships. If one thing can be reliably counted on, its immense technological advancements during wartime. The double boom forward structure, loosely resembling the profile of a UNSC frigate, with the larger upper boom containing capacitors, and both the upper and lower booms containing the electromagnetic rails necessary for the acceleration of the projectile, are the weapon's most notable features. A large electric current flows from one rail into the projectile and then to the other rail, the electromagnetic effects of this interaction accelerate the projectile at immense speed. The weapon does require a brief charging period where, once the trigger is depressed, the electricity held inside of the ammunition casing is then fed into the capacitors of the weapon, which are then discharged into the rails, but this all happens in between 1.5 and 3 seconds, depending on the specific variant. The explosive yield contained in the round adds to the kinetic force of the impact, 
making the weapon effective against both infantry and armour. We can probably deduce some estimated kinetic energies for the projectile itself, being made of ferric tungsten, which is typically an alloy with a ratio of 25% iron and 75% tungsten. We know the dimensions of the round, so if we calculate how much a round matching those dimensions would weigh in both iron and tungsten, we can then calculate the estimated mass of a ferric tungsten slug. It just so happens that a cylinder of iron measuring 16mm by 65mm weighs approximately 90 grams, and a cylinder of tungsten with those same measurements weighs 222 grams. With the previously mentioned ratios of 25% iron and 75% tungsten, we just have to effectively divide these respective weights by that percentage. So 25% of 90 grams works out about 22.5 grams, and 75% of 222 grams for tungsten works out 166.5 grams, and then it's just a case of adding these two together, equaling a projectile mass of 189 grams. Now we need to calculate velocity to find out the kinetic energy of the round. Now, I note this is based on in-game footage, approximating the distance a fired round travels in a given period of time. That is because there isn't exactly any precise canon relating to the velocity of the rounds fired by the railgun, so we're having to make do with the in-game footage. In this particular example provided by Azolai, his full video is in the description, the round is fired through 10 mongoose. Now each mongoose is approximately 2 meters wide, and they're each spaced approximately 1.5 meters apart, with a gap between the shooter and the first target of around 6 to 7 meters. When fired, the round completely destroys all 10 of the mongoose, a distance of approximately 40 meters. Bearing in mind this is also penetrating targets, and this all happens in one one hundredth of a second giving a round velocity of 4 kilometers per second, which makes it Mach 11.6, 11.6 times the speed of sound. The actual velocity in canon hasn't been specifically stated, so in lieu of official canon numbers, gameplay will have to suffice. This gives the round, under ideal conditions, at exiting the muzzle, a kinetic striking force of 1,332,000 joules or 982,432.7 foot-pounds, or roughly the equivalent of 70 50 calibre BMGs. This is likely ungodly too high, but it is the best we have at this time. I never said it would be reasonable. It is worth noting that the rifle is in fact called a recoilless rifle, implying no recoil. This isn't strictly true. Where with ballistic weapons, the burning and exploding of gunpowder is what creates the recoil. You know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and generates an equal and opposite force on the user from the explosive force pushing the bullet down the barrel. It could be argued that due to the different method of operation, there would be no recoil. But this would violate conservation of momentum, meaning there has to be recoil. The way this is done in systems where motion is imparted via induction, as is the case for the railgun, is governed by Lenz Law, which states that a current induced by a magnetic field will itself produce a magnetic field that opposes the original. Acceleration using induction can be done over a much longer period of time than the duration of an explosion, for example, so the instantaneous force can be much smaller than a similarly sized ballistic projectile at comparable muzzle velocity despite the reality that ballistics are seldom ever capable of accelerating a bullet to hypersonic velocities, but that's by the by. The railgun features a built-in display for critical weapon information, such as current ammo capacity, charge level, as well as built-in targeting systems, enabling a targeting reticle to be displayed onto UNSC Marine HUD goggles or eyepieces, as well as ODST visor systems and Spartan HUD systems, to quick, at-a-glance targeting. In addition to this, the railgun features a smart scope system, allowing Marines, ODSTs, and Spartans to connect to the weapon sighting systems and display a projection sight for more accurate firing of the weapon at distance. There are a few known variants of the railgun, the first being the whiplash, 
an improved version of the railgun with faster charging cycle and the ability to fire two rounds per magazine. And the rounds themselves are fitted with a proximity airburst fuse. The Arc Light is an advanced variant that has been designed to fire armor piercing high explosive rounds with a distinct and intentional over penetration feature, allowing the round to pierce through multiple targets. The charge takes slightly longer to accumulate, but once charged, can be held until the user is ready to let the round fly with negligible discharge over time. The Extractor is a unique variant that's current known differences to other variants is only that its energy arcs seen during its use are green as opposed to blue. This would suggest that some degree of Covenant reverse engineered plasma energy power source may be used, similar to that of the plasma pistol or fuel rod cannons, to fire the projectile contained within, perhaps with the intention of limited tracking capabilities imparted by the Covenant's still unknown methods of manipulating plasma trajectory at distance but this is extremely hypothetical. The railgun is deadly accurate and nigh impossible to evade at short and medium distances, assuming the user can keep the reticle on the target. And even at long distances, the round travels faster than the shockwave of its firing, meaning if aimed and fired well, a target can be eliminated and a second target acquired and fired upon before the sound of the first shot even reaches the target. Despite its extremely high velocity and stopping power on armoured personnel, the weapon is proportionally weak against vehicles unless hitting a critical system of the vehicle in question, meaning the lethality against vehicles lays very much in the hands and the practice knowledge of the user firing it. The charging time is also a mild handicap as it opens up a period of time where enemies could be returning fire before the user has even fired the round, and on top of this, while it's extremely high velocity, if by chance the target manages to evade the round, or more commonly, the user misses, the sound of the weapon firing will alert enemies to its presence, while the user is forced to reload and charge again for a second shot, or while enemies could be either seeking cover or returning fire, leaving the user vulnerable to counter-attack. A compact and powerful electromagnetic launcher which fires a high-explosive ferric-shelled projectile at incredible speeds, the ARC-920, simply known as the Railgun, bears the fierce reputation of a portable engine of destruction. Its combination of speed, accuracy, and both kinetic and explosive stopping power makes this weapon incredibly effective against even the most heavily armoured and shielded personnel. Let me know in the comments what weapon you want me to cover next on the Armoury and like I said, the most commonly requested weapon will be the feature of the next Armoury video. So until then, thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, and I look forward to what you have to say. And quick shout outs and thank yous to my patrons, Spartan10148, my devastatingly effective Metarch class at Scylla, Silver Spartan, Leon, Ram, Prophet Bear, and Irrefutable Justice, my ever vigilant monitors. The careful tending of Alvin, Andrew, Brian, Cameron, Darian, Devon, Phantom, Flaming Halo, Cabal, Legions Lost, Michael, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub-monitors, my growing fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my most loyal of enforcers, and all my awesome Sentinels, Sentries, and Constructors who have jumped aboard on Patreon to help support the channel. You have my debt of gratitude. And, as ever, Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcentient YouTube member. Thanks for keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Remember to like, comment and subscribe, as it all helps the channel grow and helps me to continue to deliver this kind of content for you guys. And if you're ready for your next steps in evolution, head over to Patreon and become a patron there, or become a YouTube member to attain a higher state of being. Much love to all of you, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.